What up folks, it's Alex here. Today we're gonna to have a little look at ND filters, more specifically, ND filters for your drone. ND filters seems to be a really contentious issue in the in the drone world at the minute. Some people seem to argue that they're 100% necessary if you want the, that cinematic look. Others really don't see the value in them. In this video, I'm gonna try and put together some samples and some information to help you make the decision as to whether ND filters are worth the hassle or not for you. But before we do any of that, I need a cup of coffee. So ND filters, before we actually talk about ND filters, we're just gonna have a quick talk about frame rate and shutter speed. Your frame rate is how many individual frames make up one second of your video footage. 24 FPS equals 24 individual frames per one second of video. 60 FPS is 60 individual frames for every second of your video. Different frame rates have different looks to them. So 24 FPS is generally considered for that cinematic look, whereas 60 FPS gives you a really smooth sort of look. Some people love it, some people hate it. Your shutter speed is the duration of each of those individual frames. So if you've got 24 frames in a second, your shutter speed is how long each of those individual frames lasts. And the longer each frame lasts, i.e. the slower the shutter speed, the more motion will be captured within each frame. So in this example, you can see at one 500th of a second, it's pin sharp and there's no blur at all. At one 60th of a second, there's a tiny little bit of motion blur. And at one half a second, one over two, there's loads of motion blur and you can barely make out the detail of the guy. This is an example clip of a video at 25 frames per second where the shutter speed is far too slow. You can barely make out any detail and as the people walk in front of the camera, they're just a blurry mess. And here's a video from my drone where the shutter speed is clearly too high. As you can see from the bottom of the frame, there's no motion blur at all and it looks really, really choppy. Now as a rule, called the 180 degree shutter angle. And this rule dictates that your shutter speed should be twice that of your frames per second. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, then your shutter speed should be 1 48th of a second or 1 50th of a second. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, then your shutter speed should be as close as you can get to 1 120th of a second or 1 125th of a second. Now I say it's a rule, it's not, it's just a guideline. It's there to give you an idea of the shutter speed to use that's slow enough so that you don't have a choppy video, but it's not too slow that it's so that your subject becomes a blurry mess. Easy, right? Just select the shutter speed that is twice that of your frames per second. What's the problem? Well, the problem arises on bright days. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you need a shutter speed of 1 50th of a second. Your shutter speed not only affects the aesthetic look and feel of your video, but it also affects the exposure or the brightness of your video. A lower shutter speed will allow more light into the camera than a faster shutter speed. Now because it's actually a length of time, it's not as complicated as it looks. You've just got to remember that it's done in fractions. But if I double the amount of time, then I double the amount of light. And if I half the amount of time, I half the amount of light. So one one hundredth of a second is half that of one fiftieth of a second, so we're letting half the amount of light. One two hundredth is half of one hundredth, and one four hundredth is half of one two hundredth, etc. Now if you set your shutter speed to one fiftieth of a second, you'll be letting in too much light and your footage will be overexposed, so you physically can't get correctly exposed video while using one fiftieth of a second. And that's where ND filters come in. They're like sunglasses. They reduce the amount of light that actually makes it into your camera's sensor. So on that sunny day, you can set it to 1 50th of a second and use the ND filter to reduce the amount of light getting into your camera 
and therefore you've got the shutter speed you need to match your frame rate without overexposing your actual footage. How much actual light will be reduced will depend on which ND filter you use. Now you notice on ND filters they're all rated, they've all got an ND and then a number, so ND4, ND8, ND16, etc. Now the higher the number, the more light it will stop from getting into your, your camera. With no ND filter at all, think of your camera or your drone as ND1. Now an ND2 filter reduces the amount of light by half. So as soon as you put an ND2 filter on, you've reduced the amount of light that can get to your sensor by one half. Now we don't actually want to run or expose our image, so then we can bring our shutter speed down to compensate for that loss of light. So if you're using at one eight hundredth of a second, if you put an ND2 filter on there, you'll be shooting at one four hundredth of a second while actually maintaining the exact same exposure. ND4 halves the amount of light again compared to ND2. So your shutter speed will go from one four hundredth of a second to one two hundredth of a second. ND8 is another half compared to ND4, which leaves you at one eighth of the original which means we'll be shooting at one one hundredth of a second. ND16 is half again, which will leave you at one fiftieth of a second, which, if I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, is the perfect shift speed for me. Now, while I personally think you should have a basic understanding of all that, I appreciate that when you're out and about, you don't necessarily want to have to be doing the maths. So fortunately, there's a few apps you can download. One of the popular ones is Polar Pro's Filter Calculator. And what you should do is connect to your drone, put it in auto, and let it tell you what exposure you need to use when in auto mode. Then enter that information into here. So you set your ISO, your shutter speed, and your frames per second. Hit calculate, and it'll tell you what ND filter you'll need to use to get your shutter speed down to twice that of your frames per second. Now, if you get stuck, click the question mark, and there's a full guidance notes on there on what you need to do. All right. All right, so that's all the theory out of the way. Hopefully that makes sense. Now the best way to demonstrate a lot of that is to go out and get some test footage, which is what we're going to go do now. 
hopefully all of that sample footage is giving you a better idea of what I've been talking about. As you can see, there's a much more significant difference the closer you are to the subject. So when you're really high up and doing a bit of a pan, there's a very little difference. But if you're skimming your drone across the ground really low, there's a much more significant difference. Hopefully, this video has given you enough information so you can make a decision on whether ND filters are worth it or not for you. What I will say is, my personal preference is they are worth the hassle, but there is definitely a significant hassle to using them. They're an additional thing to buy, they're an additional thing to carry with you, and there's an additional setup time. It's also a pain in the ass when the sun goes in. So if you're setting your drone up with a particular ND filter on and the sun goes down and the light drops, you've got to bring your drone in, swap the ND filter over and send it off again. So really what you need to do is weigh up the benefits versus the cons. So if you notice a really significant difference in this footage, then the end eaters are probably worth the hassle. If you didn't think the difference in the test footage was that significant, then you'd probably just get annoyed with ND filters and they're probably not worth the fuss. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you found it useful. Please do like and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Pop a comment below with any feedback or anything else you want to see. And I'll see you next time.